All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner. This is going to be on FluffTube. This made it on FluffTube. Can you believe it? I'm with Nicole Nogrady coming out with a music video, Modern Day Holy War. Uh, and I just heard it, and it's it's awesome, folks. It's a great, great video. Steve Bannon and his crew hit me up and told me to have her on the show. And, of course, of course I have to do it. I got to do it. So, Nicole, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. And, folks, before I get started, get your noble gold, baby, noble gold. Geopolitical tensions are escalating. Inflation is raging despite what they say. Stocks are sinking. Debt is rising. And your own financial future isn't looking too clever, folks. You uh, Yet gold endures every crisis, wars, disasters. No calamity has beaten gold. While paper assets crash and burn, gold endures every time. You need to take a fresh look at a gold steady in your portfolio. And right now, get a free three-ounce American the Silver Virtue Coin when you open up an IRA with Noble Gold, Noble Gold Investments today. Go to Noble Gold Investments, folks. Hit the link below. Noble Gold Investments get started. All right, Nicole, great to have you on. So let's get people familiar with you because you're making a big splash. Um, I like this song. It's it's very it's 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 uplifting. I, I felt good listening to it. We're gonna let the audience listen to it right now. Um, Modern day holy war. Why? Why did you come up with this title? What drove you to write this song? What inspired you? So it was. I keep saying this. I keep saying I. It's God's song, and I'm just the messenger because it struck me literally in a moment where I was at home and I was watching Notre Dame burning down, and I was standing there in front of my TV, and I was kind of in shock because I had just been there like the previous year and had done a little boat trip down the Seine. And so it felt kind of personal when I saw it up in flames. And this voice said to me, this is the trigger event to the modern day Holy War. And I was like, whoa. And I I, I hadn't felt inspired to write a song in, in years. My life kind of took a different path for a while, but in that moment, I grabbed a piece of paper, wrote down in big letters, modern day holy war across it. And, and it sat there on my coffee table. And a couple of days later, I went to Guitar Center, restrung my guitar that had had no strings on it and had a lot of dust on it for quite a while. And I just started piecing it together. And I mean, I, I, I've always been really deeply spiritual. And, and what I would say is like, is very connected to the Holy Spirit and, and to, you know, to God and to source, but I didn't are, really- Are you a Catholic? I went to Catholic high school, but I left there with more questions than I, I you know, I, I left there and I was kind of like, what was that? You know, I mean, but there was just, <laughs> a lot of it has to do with maturity. Yeah. When you're that young, it's, it's really hard to grasp and understand things, especially the way that the verbiage and of the Bible, and especially the version of the Bible that we were using in high school, you know, the thou though, I was like, what? <laughs> but, um, and also when you're young, you're rebellious, right? You, you, you want to do the opposite of what everyone tells you to do. So even though I, I kind of scratched my head leaving school, I still had those innate values that I, I grew up going to a Catholic church ever since I was a baby. And so it's, it's really important to, to get children, at least just like around that kind of atmosphere and energy, because you are, you're downloading these, these. So even though I left Catholic school and was like, what? Uh, I still had that connection and those values. And I went to Hollywood when I was pretty young. I was only like 22. And at the time I thought I knew everything, right? Um, and so even though I was in Hollywood and I, I went to Hollywood in pursuit of music. But you were, you were really time. rebelling. You went to Hollywood. I mean, you went to Catholic school or Catholic to, to Hollywood is like big. That's a big transition because Hollywood, yeah. I've been there and I've seen some stuff and that's. I really feel extremely protect. I, I feel like I was, no, I know with all my heart that I was extremely, that I was protected because there were a lot of things that happened. A lot of things that I was around that 
the, the, that little voice inside, you know, you got the angel and the devil, right? And even though I would say I did a few things that I would never do now, I still always only went like, you know, like this far, like, okay. <laughs> over the line, you just, you just touched over the line a little bit, just put your foot <laughs> yeah, across. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it was like, okay, you know, I'm here, but I'm only gonna go this far. And so I because I just I had those those innate values that I just like, couldn't, you know, there were just things that I was just like, things I just can't do, you know, and um, were you ever like propositioned or I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things that happened in Hollywood that and a lot of people sell their soul to make it in the music industry. I mean, so people will do whatever it takes. It's funny you say that because I, I, my first group of friends in Hollywood was this group that was friends with Katy Perry and Katy, Katy was a singer songwriter. She was, she was recording the album that became her breakout hit album. And I was around her. I, I didn't, I wouldn't say I was like friends with her or anything, but I was friends with her friends. So it was like one degree away and her best girlfriend and I had the same birthday. So like she came to my birthday party one year. I was passed out on my couch when she got there. So I don't remember, but, um, but I saw her rise and I also feel like I kind of saw her fall. And I remember seeing an interview she did where she said blatantly, I wanted to be a Christian singer like Amy Grant, but it didn't work out. So mm. instead I sold my soul to the devil. Do you remember what she, did you ever see that clip? Yeah. I, I and I can kind of say the same to you. Like everything I'm seeing with her right now, I'm like, wow. Like this really? is, well, I mean, look at her. I mean, this is complete. The whole thing that's going on with her to me, the way she started is nothing like where she is now. And yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not talking about success. I'm talking about doing things that I feel are out of character, you know, not, yeah. and this is YouTube. So I got to keep it clean, but yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying. So you took an 11 year hiatus. Uh, do you want to yeah. go into that 11 years? So I've been, let me see now I've been almost retired now for nine months from boxing. I mean, nine years from boxing. I couldn't imagine going back to it. That's a much different field, <laughs> but um, why do you take, do you want to get into why you took an 11 year hiatus? That's a yeah, long sure. time. So I, I ended up releasing an album on 11, 11, 11. And Right around that time, I had some some very interesting family things happened. I, I found out my father, who I thought had passed away when I was a young child, I found him on Facebook. Um, you can't just say that and go like right into the next. Let's just talk. Can we talk about that for a quick second? That's sure. that's yeah. huge. Like you thought your dad, you believed your dad was had passed away for how long? My whole life. Your whole life. You were told that by who? Your mom? Yeah. And, and family, you know, I, were they doing this just to keep you away from him or no, I mean, you know, the, the, the story or was this is, a surprise to everybody. It was a surprise to everybody. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, everybody thought he had passed, you know, um, I, I guess there was a phone call that was made that he had died of a heart attack and I'm not sure. I really don't know, to be honest. And I've just surrendered to the fact that I will never know. Um, but my parents did get divorced when I was very young. And, um, you know, my mom was also very shocked by this news as well. So I've kind of surrendered to the unknowing and to knowing that even when crazy weird things happen in your life or negative things happen, there's always a, a bigger picture, right? Because so I, I go by the moniker Lady No Grady because it rhymes. It's easy to say. It's my last name. So 11 years ago, I released that album under the moniker Lady No Grady. And um, I wouldn't have been Lady No Grady if my parents had, you know, like stayed together. I would have had the, No Grady's actually my my mother's maiden last name. And Nicole No Grady, I think it I, I think it sounds nice. And so I, I wouldn't have been like who I am had things not happened the way they did. And I actually do talk to my father now, which is. You have a crazy. relationship with him now. Yeah. Yeah, I do. So how He's, many years without your father? Uh, 26, 26 years. You believed he was passed. You thought you lost your father. Yeah. How emotional was it? I'm sorry I'm going in this direction, but this no, is like, that's okay. I opened up a can of worms. No, but this is, Hey, when you come on Nino's show, this is the way it goes. So, <laughs> 
So how so how was it when you did you rekindle the flame with your father? Did you meet up with him? Did you go fly yeah. out to meet? Was he in the same city, same state? Like how did this even go down? He he lived in a different state, but he was actually going to be in California for business. And we met up and spent about a week together. And it was the strangest thing because when I saw him, it was like a stranger yet like the most familiar you know when we we hugged for the first time it, like I can talk about it now without like breaking down but it was like it, it was like a, a coming home feeling you know it, it was it was ugh. Whew, it was very 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 emotional and the weirdest thing about it is is and this is also what really strengthens my belief in God is that when I was a young child I would at night sometimes literally wish upon a star I, I i i'd look out my window and i and i would ask god god like can i i just want to hug my dad one time so when that happened i was like whoa oh, like, wow. you know yeah. like wow yeah. and and um and so and my father was very musical he played the upright bass he played the upright bass oh, really so you got it from your dad I got it from my dad and I got it from my grandfather. My grandfather had a, my grandfather on my mother's side had a beautiful, beautiful voice, played the piano. Um, and then did your my, dad know you played an instrument and you didn't know he didn't. So. so it's, it's interesting because around that same time. So I had just released my album on 11, 11 and I found out he was alive a month and like a few days later. So it was like, right. One thing right on top of the other. Right. And he told me, he said, I had just started typing your name into, because I had a different last name. He said, I found some pictures online of a girl called Lady No Grady. And, you know, and so he had just been searching for me as well. And my, my album photos popped up and he was like, but I didn't know if it was you. And I was like, well, yeah, that was me. And so he was, he was very surprised by it too and so, so but he knew you existed he knew he had a daughter I mean, correct yeah it, and, and and it's interesting how it happened it was just it was a con it, it was in a conversation with a family friend and uh one thing led to the other in the conversation and she just said have you ever have you ever googled your dad before and I said you know no I haven't and I googled him and a name popped up in northern California which was where he had lived for a long time and then I typed his his name into Facebook, and a and a profile popped up. Wow! And and I looked at the birth date because back no then, need for a private investigator, just use Google, right? <laughs> yeah. So so uh, a a profile popped up and it had his birthday April third, and it was it was an older man's face, but it was kind of a side profile picture. But in that moment, I knew and and I almost had I had like an like a like a spiritual out of body experience it was like my soul my spirit like jumped out of my body and I was like everything I ever thought in my life like if like that that innate feeling that I had that something was off was weird like obviously like our souls are we're, we're all connected right one body of Christ and I just like knew, I just knew it. I, I, it's all what I kept repeating. I was like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So it was kind of crazy, but I sent him a friend request and, and then I was typing out a message, you know, did you ever have a, a daughter? And before I could send it, he sent me a relationship request as father. No. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> before you could even press send. That's insane. Yeah. So, wow. so are you, are you, are you in contact with him now? Are you close to him? If you don't mind me asking, you know, we've kind of ebbed and flowed and a lot of it has to do with the fact that my brain just, just, it was never like, sometimes I just get into the groove of my regular life. Right. And, and I'm sure he does the same and we'll go like a long gap of time without talking. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to my dad, you know, and, and we'll talk, but I'm, and we'll catch up. But, um, there's but, a lot to catch up on. <laughs> I know it's it's weird because it's almost like it's almost like a, a death, but an undeath, and it's really it was it was a death of my identity. It was so. A did death. did you have another? Uh, oh, when you met him, it was a death of your identity. It's just like finding out my father was alive. It it was so much a part of who I was that you know I I'm an only child, and my mom's an only child, and she raised me, and you know it was kind of like my story of who I was, and I was very I've been very close to 
my mother's side of the family. So my mother, my grandmother, and you didn't have another father figure. Um, I, I did. Yes. It's okay. my stepfather who I'm very, very close to. Okay. Um, and I, and I have a couple of, of, of stepsisters. They're, they're no longer married, but I'm, we're actually still all very close, which is really nice. But, but after all that happened, it really just completely took my focus totally off of music, obviously. And I just didn't have the mental strength to do everything I needed to do to go out. So that, that was when you took the 11 year hiatus is when you, when that, that was the beginning, that was the beginning of it. And I just, my soul was just so kind of confused and, and hurt because it didn't understand like, well, why did this have to happen? You know I mean? Bad things happen to good people all the time. And not that this was necessarily like that type of thing. I wouldn't but... say that's a bad thing at all. Yeah, no, I know, but but I mean, just well to miss out on that many years yeah. and and feel like I kind of got cheated or whatever. But like I said, God has His plan, and we might not always understand it. But um, I just I needed to do a lot of healing, and I had always loved massage therapy, and I have very weird thumbs. They bend very far. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I was always really good at giving massage and it was another passion of mine and so I said you know I'm just gonna pursue this not to mention when you're trying to make it in Hollywood you've got to be a waitress you've got to be a, I was a stand-in for a lot of years for many actresses and I you know kind of got stuck in that for a while uh which was how, great. Long, how long were you in Hollywood for I lived in Hollywood for a total of 15 years but damn you were there 15 years yeah yeah, but I mean, I'm from Orange County, so I'm just 60 miles down the freeway, so I still would drive home and spend my time there. Uh, but 10 of those years, I worked in film, TV, and was doing music, so I was always working odd jobs, working at restaurants, and I said, you know, if I really want to do music, I need something that is mine where I can, you know, really build a business and have my own schedule. And then pursue, pursue my artistic endeavors. So I went to massage school and instead of going kind of using that as a tool to get back into music, I got a lot of, I had a lot of clients and I was really busy and it's really one of my passions. And, and, uh, and, and I would say that I, I have the gift of like healing and, um, and so I just dove into that and I got so, so super busy and it was awesome. Uh, I opened up a, a little massage space with a friend of mine and we were really starting to make things happen. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's okay. But so were you also doing acting out there in Hollywood or is it just strictly music? Were you just trying to do strictly music or what were you trying all avenues? I wanted to do music. So I went to the musicians Institute, which is in Hollywood. And I went there in, I went there. I don't, I'm going to say the year. I don't want to say the year. I went there in the, <laughs> early, in the earlier side of the two thousands and, um, but I didn't actually live in Hollywood at the time I was commuting and that was horrible, but, um, I, I did have the program. I didn't end up completing it because like I said, the commute was, I, it was, it was so hard, but around that time I was already making a lot of connections in the industry. And a lot of them were telling me, you don't need to go to go to school. You, you know, you already know all the right people. And I was like, okay. So I ended up dropping out. But then a few years later, moved to Hollywood, and I ended up being a stand-in for a comedian named Sarah Silverman. I remember her. Yeah. I haven't seen much of her lately, but yeah, she was, she yeah. was big on I mean, she might still be. I don't know, but I've seen her, yeah. She is, and she's very on the on the left, you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, right? So I, I was her stand-in for a few years, and then I kept getting those kinds of gigs, which were great. They paid really well, but you had to be on set for, like, 12 hours a day, you know how it is. And so it really took up so much of my time. But then at night I was writing my album and there were a couple of days where my, my producer's studio was maybe like 15 minutes from the sound studio or 10 minutes from the sound studio. So on my breaks, on my lunch breaks for, of Sarah Silverman, I would race over it. You really weren't supposed to leave the lot, but I did. Um, I would race over to the studio and and we work on some stuff and then I would race back. So I needless to say, I wasn't getting very much sleep during that time, but so I, I did I, some acting stuff, but it was just small. I did small little, you could, you could see me in, in the movie live free or die hard. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like a little part in that. My mom was like at the theater. That's my daughter. 
so but, you uh, took an 11 year hiatus you're back in the you, you 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 came back with a bang you made a great music video i'm gonna play right now for everybody how'd you get connected with steve bannon how did this happen happened i didn't know what was going to happen to my business and i ended up closing down and moving back home with my family like a lot of people did oh yeah uh, back in orange county and I always I, tell people that year either made you or broke you, man. That, that was a tough year. I for a lot either of made like million and billionaires. Yeah. Or, yeah. I, I just, I, I was living in quiet, quiet Orange County and I started working at like a sports club doing massage. But, but even right before then I I've been a, and I'm going to say I have been a long time conspiracy researcher, conspiracy and corruption researcher. I'm not going to use the other term because they're not theories. Most of them are not yeah, theory. 100%. And actually during lockdown- Conspiracy scientists. I came across of some amazing people who were also exposing a lot of what was going on during Beep. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you're one of them. So thank <laughs> you. And uh, I, I started like posting just, uh, anyways, I ended up getting- you, you, you never, You're never the same. You're never ever the same once you know. It's, Once you uh, wake up, you cannot go back to shoot. No, and you're like, wow, how did I not see this before? I, yeah. I, I say they come in waves. Like the first wave was probably, uh, you know, John F. Kennedy. And then after that, it's 9-11. And then I think 2020 with the boogeyman, they come in waves. So my wave was obviously 9-11. And then a lot of people started waking hey, up in 2020. You just reminded me of something that I feel like is important to say. It was on the set of Sarah Silverman program that I woke up. They were doing a scene that was actually mocking 9-11. Wow. And I had a little script thing there and I'm reading through, you know, guy comes in dressed like 9-11 tower with airplane. And I'm like, what? And I remember walking off of the, the soundstage and I was talking to one of the gaffer guys. And I just said, is it just me? Or like, does this? bother anybody and he agreed with me and we started chatting and he goes well do you know about 9-11 and I said no yeah, he's very not. vague on fluff tube oh okay yeah, anyway I have to correct it. this is normal and my audience is used to this it's gotcha. well I was directed to watch some videos and I did and then I went down this thing this hole <laughs> And then rabbit I never, hole I never yep. came out. Um, and yeah. then it turns into a maze. It turns into a maze. By the way, you don't ever right, get out. Right. Well, like yeah. during the the the, uh, and they took my Instagram page down, and I was so mad. No reason, no warning. I woke up one day, user not found, and I got so mad that I had relief money, and I bought the laptop that we're talking on, and I bought my first DSLR camera, and. I went and started traveling to all of the political rallies in DC. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to take pictures that they can't take from me because I had photos of my family, my grandparents on my Insta, like my Facebook. They got me off Facebook. I don't have a Facebook anymore. I, I don't know. And there's a lot of imposters on there, folks. It ain't me, but yeah, they took me down. Wow. So this is normal. This is, this was, this is the big purge of, of 2020. They took out everybody. Um, so, folks, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play your video now. I want people to oh, watch this. I was just going to say, it was Steve found my photography website on Getter. Really? So, yeah. Steve found you. He sought you out. Yeah, he found wow. my photography website on Getter and said, we have a rally coming up. At, it, it was, it was an anti-censorship rally. Kind of funny, right? We are just yeah, talking yeah. about that. And it was, um, it was with um, RF. Kay and Naomi Wolf and he, they flew me up there and I, I did some corresponding for that and some photography and then since then I did some social media stuff for him for a while and then did a lot of photos like for him, how I really got to know them got to know the crew and we were in the car one day and I'll try to make this fast and I said Steve do you want to hear this song that I wrote I had written a song in years and I played him the song and he was like this is good and a while later he was like, when are you going to release that? And I had been waiting to release it because I didn't feel like things had gotten really bad enough until Palestine and Israel. And then that's yeah. when Steve called me and he's like, with this war, it's time to get this song out there. So he he hooked me up with um, Max Ultra Maga Party, who took, who took my idea and some footage that I had compiled with another friend and turned it into 
Okay, so you so they they helped you orchestrate and, and make this video. So yeah. they helped. Oh, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Max cool. is amazing. Max does all of and because I I did uh did some Instagram for Steve in the past, I was always posting Max's videos. So I feel very honored that it was him that did this. All right, folks. Here we go. This is the premiere of the music video Modern Day Holy War. Correct. Yes. All right. Here we go. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God. That was us. Awesome. It's a great video. Uh, 
every time I, I watch it, you know, I, I catch more and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting teary eyed. Like, it's nice to be able to watch it, not as the artist, it's but just, just watch it. It's so crazy to me how prevalent it is now and how obvious it is in the industry and everywhere. I mean, it's just right in front of your face. So to me, this video is like you're showing, you're exposing the industry even, all of it. And it really is a modern day holy war, it really is. I almost feel like I need to like um, introduce you to Billy Falcon. I think you guys could do a, uh, you guys should do something together. I think, do you know Billy Falcon? I don't, but I'm totally open. He used to write songs for Bon Jovi and he's a good friend of mine. I, I should make the connection. I should. Oh, wow. But um, yeah, he's a good dude. He's a, he's right on the same page as you. I'd like to see it like a duet or that'd be pretty cool. Um, Wow. Is this on YouTube? Do you have a channel on YouTube? Do you have, is this? Yeah. Yeah. It's up on YouTube and there's a couple of videos that are my older from like 12 years. A couple songs from the old album are on there. Um, I took a few down because they're not. You know, what yeah, I would want yeah. people here now, but um, but yeah, it's on YouTube, and then Steve is is pushing it from the vi the the interview that we did on Friday on his show, and it's on Rumble, and that that is the the link that seems to be kind of I don't want to say going viral, but getting out there right now. So you're doing a real big media push right now, and Steve's helping you. Yes. Steve, when we were in the car, he's like, bop, 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 text this person, text that person. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, no, that's so awesome. I want to see you do big things. I, I love this song. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, you did a great Thank job. You. 11 years. Hey, you needed 11 years to grow and, <laughs> and mature into song. this. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. This was the first song that I, my, my old album was other producers that gave me like music tracks. And then I wrote over the music tracks. This was the first time that I sat with my just acoustic guitar for like a year, literally like a year, just on my couch, my pajamas late at night, fingers practically bleeding that like I did that song. And so that's why I am so happy that that, that that's the song, you know. Not so you, it took you a year to write this song and, and it took you yeah. a whole year. Yeah, like about. Yeah. How long did it take to create the video? Uh, so, uh, a friend, a friend of mine, Errol Weber, he and I sat and, and compiled all of the, like, not all, but, but many of the clips with the, the vibe that we were going for. And we pulled all the, like the MTV, like the Sam Smith stuff, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then compiled kind of like one video. And then that was over a couple day period. Then, then Max got all that footage and it took him like two weeks of literally, he's like, I'm not, I'm not sleeping. I was like, we need to take care of yourself. But I mean, he, he just, he put everything he had into it and it, and it, and it shows it's, it's almost like a little mini film. No, it was put together very well. So I'm, yeah. I, I loved it. So where can people go to find you? Um, well, I, I'm all, I am on Instagram, <laughs> no shadow ban, but Instagram at real Nicole no Grady. Isn't it just, isn't it sad? Like you can have, a, I, I will see my Instagram. I'll get, oh wow. I got a thousand people and my number stays the same. Yeah. I'm like, so they'll like take, they'll deduct. Is that what they're doing? They like govern oh, so, your channel. So many of my friends have been like, had to, like one of my friends the other day had to refollow me and I was like, what happened? And he was, I don't know. I wasn't not following you anymore. So, um, so maybe I should just plug uh yeah ladynograady.com and i'm going to be building that website out right now it's just the song you can buy the song straight from there and it's also the video uh and then on on uh on x nicole underscore no grady and then on truth social nicole no grady so there's no and go nicole no grady like that's how they find it basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay you, all right so and if people do Google me, they are going to see, just for fair warning, they're going to see people I worked with in the past. They're going to see the old part of me. And part of me didn't want people to see that. And Steve's like, stay Lady No Grady. It's part of your journey. You know, so people are already complaining about it. I say own it. You know, I, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, you know, I, I wrote my own book and everything. And I, I tell you that right now, like I, I own everything. I own it. I own it all. <laughs> yeah, it's part of your journey. It is. It is. I don't regret anything. I regret what I didn't do. Okay. So Amen to that. <laughs> so ladynograady.com. Go to ladynograady.com. Give her some love. Uh awesome video. Thank you for taking your time to join me. I appreciate it. Um, give uh Steve a hug and a fist bump for me. 
I will for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome.